Welcome to the eighth day of our Bible reading. Today we are going to be reading from chapter 36 to chapter 40. Let's start. Chapter 36, the family of Esau. Now this is the genealogy of Esau, who is Edom. Esau took his wives from the daughters of Canaan, Ada, the daughter of Elon, the Etite, Aolibama, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zibion, the Evite, and Basemat, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nebajot. Now Ada bore Elivast to Esau, and Basemat bore Reuel, and Aolibama bore Jerush, Jalam, and Korah. These were the sons of Esau, who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Then Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all the persons of his household, his cattle, and all his animals, and all his goods, which he had gained in the land of Canaan, and went to a country away from the presence of his brother Jacob, for their possessions were too great for them to dwell together. And the land where they were strangers could not support them because of their livestock. So Esau dwelt in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. And this is the genealogy of Esau, the father of the Edomite, in Mount Seir. These were the names of Esau's son, Elivas, the son of Ada, the, the wife of Esau, and Reuel, the son of Basemat, the wife of Esau. And the sons of Elivas were Teman, Omar, Zevo, Gatam, and Kenaz. Now, Timna was the concubine of Elivas, Esau's son, and she bore Amalek to Elivas. These were the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. These were the sons of Reuel, Naat, Zerah, Shama, and Meza. These were the sons of Basemat, Esau's wife. These were the sons of Aulibama, Esau's wife, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zibion. And she brought to Esau, Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These were the chiefs of the sons of Esau, the sons of Elivas, the firstborn son of Esau, were chief Teman. Chief Omar, Chief Zepho, Chief Kenaz, Chief Korah, Chief Gatam, and Chief Amalek. These were the chiefs of Elivas in the land of Edom. These were the sons, they were the sons of Ada. These were the sons of Reu, Esau's son, Chief Nahat, Chief Zerah, Chief Shama, and Chief Meza. These were the chief of Reu in the land of Edom. These were the sons of Basemat, Esau's wife. And these were the sons of Aulibama, Esau's wife. Chief Jeush, Chief Jala, and Chief Korah. These were the chief who descended from Aulibama, Esau's wife, the daughter of Anna. These were the sons of Esau, who is Edom, and these were his, Adi, and these were their chiefs. These were the sons of Seir, the Orite, who inhabited, who inhabited the land. Lotan, Shoban, Zibion, Anna, Dishon, Isa. And Dishan. These were the chiefs of the Orites, the sons of Seth in the land of Edom. And the sons of Lotan were Ori and Emam. Lotan's sister was Timna. These were the sons of Sheba, Alvan, Manahat, Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. These were the sons of Zibion, both Aja and Anna. This was the Anna who found the water in the wilderness as he pastured the donkeys of his father, Zibion. These were the children of Anna, Dishon and Aulibama, the daughter of Anna. These were the sons of Dishon, Emdan, Eshban, Ishan, and Cheran. These were the sons of Ezra, Bilan, Salvan, and Akan. These were the sons of Dishon, Uz, and Aran. These were the chiefs of the Orites, Chief Lotan, Chief Shoba, Chief Zibion, Chief Anna. Chief Dishon, Chief Ezra, and Chief Dishan. These were the chiefs of the Orites, according to their chiefs in the land of Seir. Now, these were the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the children of Israel. Bela, the son of Bel, reigned in Edom, and the name of his city was Dinaba. And when Bela died, Jobab, the son of Zerah of Bosra, reigned in his place. When Jobab died, Usham of the land of the Temanites reigned in his place. And when Usham died, 
Adad, the son of Bedad, who attacked Midian in the field of Moab, reigned in his place, and the name of his city was Avit. When Adad died, Samla of Masreka reigned in his place, and when Zamla died, Saul of Rehoboth by the river reigned in his place. When Saul died, Baal Anan, the son of Akbor, reigned in his place. And when Baal Anan, the son of Akbor, died, Ada reigned in his place. And the name of his city was Baal. His wife's name was Mehetabel, the daughter of Mashed, the daughter of Mezab. And these were the names of the chiefs of Esau, according to their families and their places by their names. Chief Timna, Chief Alva, Chief Jetet, Chief Aolibama, Chief Ella, Chief Pinon, Chief Kenas, Chief Teman, Chief Mipsar, Chief Magdal, and Chief Iram. These were the chiefs of Edom, according to their dwelling places in the land of their possession. Esau was the father of the Edomite. Chapter 37. Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flocks with his brothers, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Silva, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now Jacob had a dream. Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear this dream which I have dreamt. There, there we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose and also stood upright, and indeed your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brothers said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brother and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream, and this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him. But his father kept the matter in mind. Then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are you not are you, are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So he said to him, Here I am. Then he said to him, Please go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the flocks, and bring back word to me. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron, and he went to Shechem. Now a certain man, a certain man found him, and there he was one, and there he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, "What are you seeking?" So he said, "I am seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are feeding their flocks." And the man said, "They have departed from here. If I hear them say, let us go to Dotan." So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dotan. Now when they saw him afar, even before he came near, they conspired against him to kill him. Then they said to one another, <laughs> Look, this dreamer is coming. Come therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit, and we shall see some white beast has defiled him. We shall see what will become of his dreams. But Reuben heard it, and, del and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit, which is in the wilderness, and do not leave him in him, that he might deliver that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So it came to pass, when Joseph had come to his brothers, that they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many colors that was on him. Then they took him and cast him in the pit, and the pit was empty, for there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat a meal. Then they lifted their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels, bearing spices, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brother, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. 
and his brother's listing. Then Midianite and the Midianite traders passed by. So the brothers put Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Then Reuben returned to the pit. And indeed, Joseph was not in the pit. And he tore his clothes. And he returned to his brothers and said, The lad is no more. And I, where shall I go? So they took Joseph's tunic, killed a kid of the goats, and dipped the tunic in the blood. Then they sent the tunic of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, We have found this. Do you know whether it is your son's tunic or not? And he recognized it and said, This is my son's tunic. A white beast has deformed him. Without doubt, Joseph is torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put sackcloth on his waist, and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters arose to convert him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I shall go down to the grave to my son in the morning. Thus his father wept for him. Now the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an, offer, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. Chapter 38 It came to pass at that time that Judah departed from his brothers and visited a certain Adulamite whose name was Ira. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, and he married her and went into her. So she conceived and bore a son, and he called his name Er. She conceived again and bore a son, and she called his name Onan. And she conceived yet again and bore a son, and called his name Shelah. He was at Chesip when she bore him. Then Judah took a wife for Er, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. But Er, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord killed him. And Judah said to Onan, Go into your brother's wife and marry her, and raise up an heir to your brother. But Onan knew that the heir would not be his. And it came to pass, when he went into his brother's wife, that he emitted on the ground, lest he should give an heir to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Therefore he killed him also. Then Judah said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow in your father's house, till my son Shelah is born. For he said, Lest he also die like his brothers. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. Now in the process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted, and went up to his sheep shearers at Timna, he and his friend Ira, the Adulamite. And it was told Tamar, saying, Look, your father-in-law is going up to Timna to share his sheep. So, to, so she took off her widow's garment, covered herself with a veil, and wrapped herself, and sat in an open place, which was on the way of Timna. For she saw that Shelah was born, and she was not given to him as a wife. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a harlot, because she had covered her face. Then he turned to her by the way, and said, Please let me come into you, for he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. So she said, What will you give me that you may come into me? And he said, I will send a young goat from the flock. So she said, Will you give me a pledge <coughs> to you send it? Then he said, What pledge shall I give you? So she said, Your sign it and cord and your staff that is in your hand. Then he gave them to her and went into her, and she conceived by him. So she arose and went away and laid aside her veil and put it on the garments of her widowed. And Judah sent the young goat by the hand of his friend, the other lament, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand, but he did not find her. Then he asked the men of that place, saying, Where is the harlot who was openly by the roadside? And they said, There was no harlot in this place. So he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. Also the men of the place said, There was no harlot in this place. Then Judah said, Let her take them for herself, lest we be shamed. For I sent this young goat, and have not found her. And it came to pass, about three months after that, that Judah was told, saying, Tamar, your daughter-in-law, has split the harlot. Furthermore, she is with child by allotry. So Judah said, Bring her out, and let her be burned. When she was brought out, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, By the man to whom this belong, I am with child. And she said, Please determine whose these are. The signet and cord and staff. So Judah acknowledged them and said, She had been more righteous than I, because I did not give her 
to Shela, my son. And he never knew her again. Now it came to pass. At the time for giving birth, that behold, twins were in her womb. And so it was when she was giving birth that one put out his hand, and the midwife and the midwife took a scarlet thread and bound it on his hand, saying, This one came out first. Then it happened, as he drew back his hand, that his brother came out unexpectedly, and she said, How did you break through? This bridge be upon you. Therefore his name was called Paris. Afterward his brother came out who had the scarlet thread on his hand, and his name was called Zera. Chapter 39 Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had, and all that he had, he put under his authority. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house, and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance, and it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph and said, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know that it is my master does not know what is with me in this house, in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my aunt. There is no one greater in the house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me. But you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So it was as she spoke to Joseph day by day that he did not eat her, to lie with her, or to be with her. But it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the house was inside. Then she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. And so it was when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and left. And fled outside that she called to the men of her house and spoke to them saying see he has brought into he has brought he has brought in to us a hebrew to mock us he came into me to lie with me and i cried out with a loud voice and it happened when he heard that i lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garments with me and fled and went outside so she kept his garments with her until his master came home then she spoke to him with words like this saying the hebrew servant whom you brought to us came into me to mock me. So it happened as I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled outside. So it was when his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, Your servant did to me after this manner, that his anger was aroused. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were combined. And he was there in the prison, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. And he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's, committed to Joseph's hand all the <laughs> all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority, because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Chapter 40 The Prisoner's Dreams. It came to pass after these things that the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief butler and the chief baker. So he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the prison, the place where Joseph was confined. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, so they were in custody for a while. Then the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, had a dream. Both of them, each man's dream in one night, and each man's dream with his own interpretation. And Joseph came in to them in the morning and looked at them, and saw that they were sad. So he asked Pharaoh's officers who were with him in the custody of his lord's house, saying, Why do you look so sad today? And they said to him, 
we each have had a dream and there's no interpretation of it so joseph said to them do not interpretation must belong to god tell them to me please then the chief butler told his dream to joseph and said to him behold i behold in my dream a vine was before me and in the vine were three branches and i was and it was as though it budded its blossoms shot forth and its clusters brought forth ripe, grape, ripe grapes. Then Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said to him, This is the interpretation of it. The three, the three branches and three days. The three branches are three days. Now, within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your place. And you put Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former manner when you were his butler. But remember, I me mean, when it is well with you, and please show kindness to me. Make mention of me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house, for indeed I was thrown away from the land of the Hebrews. And also, I have done nothing here that they should put me in this, into the dungeon. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also was in my dream, and there were three white baskets on my head. In the uppermost basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh, and the birds ate them out of the baskets on my head. So Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation of it. The three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head from you and hang you on a tree, and the birds will eat your flesh from you. Now it came to pass on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made the feast for all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler of the chief baker among his servants. Then he restored the chief butler to his butlership again, and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to him. Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Now I've come to the end of today's video. May God bless. May God bless his word. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to see next episode. Subscribe to be notified when the next episode comes out and turn on your notifications. Thank you very much for coming on this journey with me. God bless you. Bye.